right there, Your Honor. Okay, in the matter of Horodesky versus Johnson, case 06D349743. All right, Robinson, good morning. Good morning, sorry, I just want to turn up the volume. Okay, and I see, uh, what's your volume number, Ms. Robinson? Good morning, Your Honor. Amber Robinson, bar number 10731, and then I'm bundled capacity today for Amber Johnson. Okay, and I see Mr. Horodesky is also here, and Ms. Fine, what a pleasure to see you for, for the first time. A pleasure oh, to see it's you. It's also a pleasure to see Ms. Robinson every time. Let me be very clear, okay? Nobody's getting slighted, but I haven't seen Ms. Fine in quite a long time. Good morning, Ms. Fine. Good morning, Your Honor. It's nice to be here. Fran Fine, bar number 25, appearing on behalf of Chris Hordesky and standing in for Michael Carmen, who is okay. out of town. Okay, thank you. And so, uh, Ms. Robin, no, Ms. Johnson is there with Ms. Robbins. Ms. Robinson. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. All right, so let's talk about, um, first of all, I'm missing some orders still, am I? Ms. Robinson? Yes, you are. You are. I did just send this. I didn't realize Mike was out of town. I just sent those to him this morning. Your Honor, that's the fourth here. time. The fourth time what, Ms. Fine? Fourth time this matter has been set to hold her in contempt for not getting these orders, and I have every date. Uh, that's not the, the most important issue, but still, you've ordered it four times. And I do not have the November 28th, 2021, November 30th, 2021, December 31st, 2021. Yes, so which orders, let's see, so I am definitely missing March 28th, 2019. May 14th and July 22nd and 23rd, 2021. May 14th, 2021. And July 22nd and 23rd. July 20th. July 23rd, 2021. Right. And then, uh, let's see, there was an order f due from Mr. Carmen from December 15th, 2021. That's it. I believe. Yeah, that as uh, July 23rd. I, I know I only sent him two. I'm sorry? I'm just trying to figure out where I'm missing the, the other order. I'll have to go back and send him the order from 2019. I sent him today the May 14th and the July 23rd. You sent them to Mr. Carmen? Yeah, yeah I'm handling the case. So I didn't receive them, Your Honor. How would I know that you're handling the case? He's been the acting attorney for years. Well, the court knew, so if the court knew, I'm surprised you didn't. No, I found that out, was a good I found out to, be, to be fair, I found out today. But let's, um, let's, let's get to the point. Let's see, we're here for, um, uh, let's see, Dad filed a motion on December 3rd, 2021 for suspension of visitation and for attorney's fees and costs. The alleged facts are the child has expressed fear of mom. In September 2021, mom shaved the child's head as a form of punishment. On October 21st, 2021, the child advised dad that he was being physically abused by mom. Mom made the child strip down and mom hit the child with a board. Uh, dad contacted CPS and was advised by the child's school to assume custody of the child. Uh, mom was arrested, um, excuse me one moment, mom was arrested and charged with first degree felony child abuse, dad obtained a TPO on the behalf of the child, despite the TPO, mom reached out to a group of the child's friends in order to relay information to the child. The relief requested is to suspend mom's visitation to award dad's attorney's fees and costs. On December 17, 2021, mom filed an opposition to dad's motion and counter motion, alleging that the child de-enrolled himself from the school's ROTC program. 
The child was suspended from school from, for having a controlled substance at mom's suggestion, and in the presence of dad, an agreement was made to enroll the child in ROTC after his suspension on the condition the child shaves his head. The child is stressed out, but not due to mom. There is an active CPS investigation. Dad has a history of ensuring the child is coached by his litigation therapist. There was no imminent treat uh, while the child was in mom's care, nor was, was there credible concern. Oh, no, excuse me, I'm sorry. No imminent threat. There was no imminent threat while the child was in mom's care, or, nor was there credible concern. Dad has a history of accessing the child's emails and creating an evidence trail. Dad does not give the child access to call mom of or for mom to reach the child directly. CPS advised mom that they did not remove the child from mom's care. Uh, mom did not intentionally add the child's friend to a group message. Mom has a friend with the same name that she intended to include in the group chat, not the child's friend. CPS determined that there is no threat to the child in mom's care. The child's grades are in continuous decline. The relief requested is to deny dad's motion to order dad to undergo a psychological evaluation by Dr. Peglini to include psychological testing at dad's sole expense to award mom primary physical custody of the child pending the result of dad's psychological evaluation to award mom compensatory time to prohibit any engagement between the child and any of the past litigation therapists to issue an order allowing mom to alter the July 16, 2020 order filed on February 22nd, 2021 regarding educational support and video calls between mom and the child to order the child to undergo non-litigious therapy with a mutually agreed upon therapist covered by dad's insurance. On February 15th, 2022, dad filed a reply um, alleging that it is clear that mom is in possession of multiple confidential reports. The court should require mom detail how she came possession of the confidential reports. Mom has included excerpts of the confidential reports in her opposition. Mom's opposition should be stricken from the record Mom's op opposition fails to meaningfully address the concerns of dad's motion. The child testified at the TPO hearing that mom's attack was not provoked. Uh, the child's claims of abuse are not the result of brainwashing by previous therapists, as mom alleges. Mom's credibility needs to be reassessed by the court. Mom's claims of alienation are meritless. Dad's motion should be granted. Uh, no, dad's motion should be granted and mom's counter motion should be denied. So we are here today for all of these things. Um, I should also state that um, in reading through the briefs, I should disclose that um, I have had, uh, uh, my family has had counseling with um, Mr. Callis. I think the last time was four to five months ago. No, years ago, excuse me, four to five years ago. So uh, I, I don't think that that gives me any conflict whatsoever. Um, I can be fair and, fair and um, unbiased in this case. I wanted to put that on the record. So, um, Let's see, this was Dad's motion. Ms. Fine, I will allow you to supplement uh, the briefing. Well, Your Honor, you've had some experience with this case, and your experience with this case was, at first view, Mom appears to be all together. She appears to be bright and knowledgeable and very clear, and you believe that, and, it was, and at the first hearing, decisions were made, and you quickly learned after making the decision and the motion to alter and amend, that mom's representations are not accurate. They're not accurate. They're mostly made up. Everything she says, you could just replace uh, Chris's name, and it would be the same thing. 
She has alienated the child from the father or has made every effort. And my client has made every effort to try to negotiate with mom. She, she always reverts back to 2021, to, uh, long before the incident in question uh, even started. The fact is, is that she called her, that um, she has an anger control problem. She has from, I've been working this case since 2006. Your Honor, so I have seen everything that Mr. Wardeski has done and everything that Ms. Johnson has done. And right now she has a TPO uh, so that she cannot see the child unless it's supervised. And her current husband has a TPO so that she can't see that child until without supervision. There is a felony criminal case going on at this moment. They don't usually bring a felony child abuse case if there's not some probable cause. And tomorrow, Judge, interestingly enough, is the probable cause hearing. How dare mom try to make herself look like she is holier than whatever, white as snow, because she is not. She is, if I could go back 16 years, I would, but it's not the time or the place. Your Honor, there's a felony, a felony uh, probable cause hearing because she took a board, two by four, and beat her son. She shaved his head. Who cares about TPO, ROTC? I mean, R TPO, about ROTC. That was never a fact. She just was mad at him and did it. This is what she does. Then she gets married. She has another child. She's always, it's just ridiculous right now. All I can say is that this case has been going on long enough. This young man even testified at the TPO hearing, and the transcript is attached to the reply. He does not want to see his mother. He has gone through enough with her trying to convince him to do the wrong thing. And thank God he has seen through it all, and now he is living with his father. He is getting straight A's, whatever Amber wants you to believe. I wouldn't put it past her to have said to him, get bad grades so you can come and live with me. Pretty sure that's what she did, but that's going to be difficult for me to prove. Fact is, Judge, is that this little young man, seven, almost 17 years old in April, he knows what he wants. He's not been abused. He's getting straight A's. It goes to show that he's a very smart man, and we need to continue to protect him. He does not want to see his mother. He voiced that very well. Mom accused dad twice of sexual abuse, and twice this court found that it not to be true. And Judge Tootin, Judge Hardcastle, I can't remember, Judge Henderson, we've had Judge uh, um, right before you, and now we have you, Judge Mercer. And I was so delighted when I found out they were before you, because I know how, I know that you've practiced in this field for so many years. And I know that this is just a disgrace. This case is a disgrace that it ever went on this long. Every time Mr. Hordesky wins, he would go to settlement conferences, and he gives in because he wants his son to have a relationship with his mother. But his mother doesn't deserve it. And this time, I'm begging you. I'm begging you to look at the facts, see what she's done to alienate this young man. He's doing fabulous. Please, suspend the visitation. Grant us some attorney's fees. And, uh, and cost for this. We'll do a memo of fees, but let this go until such time as she's she's either um, found either found in it not guilty or found guilty. If she goes to jail, she goes to jail. Then she has to really pay pay the pay her dues by being away from him involuntarily. But maybe she'll get the message that she needs help. She's the one that needs a psychological ass assessment, and not one that she can ambush and that's what she does she goes in and she sounds perfect i mean and it's just a sham it's just a sham and uh if i left anything out your honor i wish i could look at my client i wish i could see him and say did i leave anything out and he could respond he looks pretty content right there oh good Ms. i can't see him miss fine um are you saying that the child's grades are all a's right now he, I have his, his daily reports since he's been living with dad. He's getting straight A's. Interesting, huh? <laughs> yeah, that isn't consistent with what she alleged. Oh, yes. I, I'm pretty sure she said get, do, do badly in school. She would come to school. She was never allowed on campus. It's just an amazing story. It's like such psychological abuse. It's, it's amazing. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fine. Ms. Robinson. Thank you, Donna. 
Your Honor, while we were just speaking about the grades, if you look at Exhibit D, D filed on 2-21-22. Based That's on what date? Um, just and of quarter two. So page 122. And, I, and you haven't accepted that. I would ask that that be stricken since I received it last night. I, I Fran, can I, um, can I speak? It's my turn. Yes, well, yes. but it should, it should be stricken. Well, um, um, go, go ahead, Ms. Robinson. You're saying that there's so, evidence that, that indicates that the, his grades are... I have current right now up on Amber's phone from Infinite Campus that contradicts what Ms. Fine just said. And then in her exhibits, we have a D in English, end of quarter two. What a D in geometry, end of quarter two. A D in chemistry, end of quarter two. Um, world history, that a C. His semester exam was an F. His military ROTC was an F. Um, so for right now, and right now what we have on infinite camp, they, on, they can't really see that, I, I don't know. See. But as an officer of the court on current infinite campus, quarter three, progress grade in world That's history, and the notes say challenges with completing work on established timeliness, performing significantly below expectation, Need support with time and task management. That's in history. He, ha he has an app. I don't have the page number, so I can't even look at it. Oh, she's looking at it on uh, online right now. She and I have, it. and I've got, so because, Your Honor, because I received this last night, I couldn't send you the, the progress grades, but I have them right in front of me, and I can tell you what they say, and I can send them to you. How can you both Perfect. have progress grades that are completely opposite from one another? Well, right. I've got them. I'm logged into Infinite Campus. The quarter date is for the period of 1 4 2022 through 3 11 2022. And this is an it's Infinite Campus. It's not 3 11 2022. We're at February 22nd. That's the quarter date. So this is his progress grade. So yes. we are okay. reading you his progress grade to date with any statements or comments that the teachers have. Chemistry um, in progress grade is at a D, 68.83%. English, 54.85%. Says challenges with completing work on established timeline, timeliness or timelines. Geometry, F, 51.63%. Health science. In danger of failing, it states. In danger of failing, 51.72%. Yes. Health science, we have a D, 62.3%. Challenges. Sorry, the in progress grade is at 57.73%. Challenges okay. with completing work on established timeliness comes to class every day ready and willing to learn, though. Okay. PE, well, let me, you guys have let me, Okay, hold on. Let me just cut to the chase. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything today anyway. I have to know what's going on with the criminal case. And so we've got to put this off anyway. So I'm going to maintain the status quo right now. There's a TPO in effect. Right. Um, so we're just going to maintain. So really, you're just going to have to repeat everything you've just said when we come back, um, depending on what happens in the criminal proceedings, because this sounds serious and it, and it, and it is very important to me to know uh, to know what the criminal court is going to do. So um, so really, we're just going to come back. And I would just ask that you extend the TPO. Uh, for as long as we need until this matter is come, and you can set it for status checks. I mean, it was signed by Rebecca Burton, and uh, it just, I'm just concerned that it will expire what and we will be still in the midst of it. So, right now it's currently set to expire on February 28, 2022, correct? It's, that's next week. Yeah. So, I would ask that you extend it and I would do an order. I think and your honor, supervised visits are allowed. It, it did say supervised visits are allowed. Um, obviously, Amber has countered for primary. We do believe that that is an issue. And I think, your honor, after reading Amber's opposition, like there's very questionable timelines on dad's end of things. Um, you know, she's maintaining that, that nothing happened. Even from a physical standpoint, Your Honor, she was due to go into hip surgery within a couple of days of that incident. She could barely move, so she's certainly not sitting there, standing there, rather, and swinging two-by-fours at a child. Um, 
<laughs> this child had just been in a car accident yeah. at over 45 miles per hour less than six days prior. Had been in both parents' care. Right. Both the parents' day. care that day. Yeah. I, I asked him to Ms. come to the house for a well check. Ms. I mean, he didn't want Ms. to come. Ms. Robinson, I'm sure you've cautioned your client. I mean, she's got pending criminal proceedings. I'm concerned about what she says here today um, can be used against her. So she just needs to be cautioned about that. Um, I'm not going to... I'm I'm going to maintain the status quo, and I think it is appropriate to extend the TPO. But, Your Honor, the TPO does say that for it would allow supervised visitations. Yes. Is that anything that the court And they're specifically set forth. They're specifically set forth when they will take place. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll, uh, let me pull it up so I know, unless you want to just tell me. And as long as you both can agree, I won't uh, to put it up on when those supervised visitations should take place. I have so many papers right here, Judge. Oh, I get it. Um, oh, maybe. I had it on my computer, oh, so let me go. get it. The extended protective order was filed on January 3rd. It is set to expire February 28th. And... Uh, Okay, here it is. It is on page four. It says, applicant, that's Mr. Uh, Horodesky, is granted temporary custody of the minor child with the following visitation granted to the adverse party. The adverse party may have visits at the applicant's discretion based on the minor child's desires. The adult parties may communicate in any fashion to discuss visitation terms. So I don't see where it says anything about supervised visits. It's up to the applicant. Then there's another one that says, and I'm trying to find it. Um, Chris, if you could just email it to me really quick again so I don't have to keep looking. Um, which one is this one? Consent, and I'm gonna, we're going to print out all these assignments graded so I can show you the court at the next hearing how well he's doing. Uh, you could just submit a supplemental, um, supplemental exhibits for the next hearing. Will do. Um, and likewise, Ms. Robinson, you can do the same, of course. Yeah, I don't see an order for supervised visits. The last order that I have is the one filed January 3rd, 2022. Right, and it says that they can discuss it. It says at his discretion. It, right, and when they had the, the TPO hearing, and we did attach the transcript, they actually spoke to Hayden on the phone and swore him in, and he said he wasn't ready to see his mother. And based on that, uh, All right, let me the court in, did not make any orders for him to be able to, to have to see her. Let me, let me. And, Your Honor, I did just want to correct the record. There is no TPO with her daughter, Madeline. Yes, there is. I, yes, there is. That and was, I have it right in front of me. So was, don't play that game. It I was not. I heard it in front of me. Ms. Fine, um, hold on just a moment. Let me hear her, please. Go ahead, yes. Ms. Robinson. The, um, that was dismissed. It's no longer with my daughter. That was with Judge Ochoa on 2-11. Mm -hmm. I have it on my phone from my attorney's office. Um, so so it's, I'm just correcting the record. It was dismissed. Was, there was one in effect, yes. and now it's dismissed. Is that yes, who is exactly. All right. Thank you. And who is her attorney? Christopher Ford and Tony Smith at Ford and Friedman. Tomorrow there's a hearing. Um to extent to, uh, to, to uh, for another, to, I guess for, like, there's a motion that was filed and there's a hearing by Mr. Parker, Dr. Parker, excuse me. 8 p.m. and it states the protection order issued in this case is hereby dissolved. This was signed by Vincent Ochoa and it was electronically filed at 1.08 p.m. on 2-11-22. Well, there's a hearing. What's that case number? 
That case number. That's in the T case. That's in the T case. Um, so it's T. Give it to her. Yeah. Twenty one dash two one nine three seven seven dash N. So while I, I, I agree with it, I understand that at the one from January 24th, it also says, which is interesting, Your Honor, that um, uh, the pursuant to the court has jurisdiction to address custody of the party's minor child, wherefore applicant is awarded temporary physical custody of the minor chi child, adverse party is awarded visitation as follows. The adverse party shall have visits every Saturday and Sunday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. beginning this Saturday, January 29th, 2022 visit shall be supervised by either or both of the applicant's parents, Earl, Earl and Sally Johnson. I have not received the, um, the the dissolution of this, so if you could send that to me, Ms. Robinson, that would be great. But there is a motion on tomorrow for custody by Mr. Um, by Dr. Parker. That was all. That was that was not taken off of a calendar. It was all resolved. We settled it. We didn't do a trial. But it's not been signed, has it? That decree and that order, just like any other order in this case, by the way. So the only order that's been issue. signed is the dissolution of signed. the TPO. I, I haven't seen it, but the judge has probably seen it. So anyway. Correct. Yes. Believe that there that. Right. And I would I would apologize, but I don't have that dissolution in front of me, and I can't get get access to it. Okay. I would have to rely on someone filing with the court, and they didn't. Okay. So I would know. I need everybody to be quiet. Well, you sure argued strongly, you know, that she was lying. I need everybody to be quiet for a moment. I need to take a look at something. And, in fact, um, I'd like to go off the record just temporarily for just a moment so I can uh, take a look at something. I will be right back. So we're...